You know what's funny about the most expensive TVC list? Funny how? I mean, what's funny about it? I never expected it to do so well. That is pretty funny. <laughs> I knew a lot of people collected them, but wow. It's making my head spin. I hope this doesn't have a negative effect on Black Series collectors. The effect? I'll tell you what the effect is! It's pissing me off! And because it did so well, I thought you might want to see another. Let's do another one. So I made the top 10 most expensive TVC figures part 2. You gotta see this. Let's hope that it measures up to the first. In many ways it's superior, but will never be as recognized as the original. Let's check it out. Welcome to CKC, I'm Matt. And if you like Star Wars and Star Wars collecting, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe, like this video, and hold on to your butts. Wow, we've done a lot of lists. We've done the top 10 most expensive Black Series figures, the most expensive part two, the most valuable Black Series releases, and the most valuable Black Series releases part two, the most shocking Black Series prices, both high and low, the most worthless Black Series figures, and the most worthless Black Series figures part two, all of which are linked in the description of this video in case you want to check them out. We've also done the top 10 figures missing from the Black Series, which is also linked in the description, a list from which I have now nailed a total of three figures now that Asaz Ventress has been leaked. Further proof that Hasbro's been watching this channel, and to them I still say, Welcome aboard! And once again, I offer my services to the Star Wars department. I do have a Juris Doctorate, but we did do a top 10 most expensive TVC figures, also linked in the description, which at this point is the fastest video to get to 10,000 views that I have ever done. What was that? I felt a great disturbance in the Force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. Yeah, those are Black Series collectors after hearing that news. But anyway, what do you do when you're thirsty? You go back to the well, that's right. But to do that, we need something. Walter, what are we missing? This is not Nam, this is bowling. There are rules. Hey. Oh yes, the rules! Rule 1, only single figure releases. We haven't gotten to multi-packs or vehicles yet, but those are coming soon. Rule 2, no foil variants, exclusives, or mail-aways. Those we're saving for the most valuable releases lists, which will be coming. But as we did before, the online exclusive waves do count. And that's it! All right, great. Thank you, Ron. So we have everything we need, so let's get this party started. But first, honorable mentions. Honorable. The Vintage Collection Revenge of the Sith Darth Sidious, VC-12, 70 bucks. I have waited a long time for this moment. Yes, that's right. The cheapest figure on the second most expensive list is still 70 bucks. You'd be shocked at how many TVC figures are 50 bucks and more. Long overdue, the Emperor figure is actually scene specific based on his look during the epic Senate battle versus Master Yoda. This figure just straight up confuses me. However, some collectors think it's one of the best, and I will admit that some parts of it are awesome, but there's just a lot left to be desired. I mean, even I could dress him in some better attire than this. Your arrogance blinds you, Master Yoda. The head sculpt is amazing. The detail in the paint apps make him look just like a cackling Palpatine. <laughs> and although he has swivel jointed hips, he's not the type of figure where crazy Jedi poses are necessary. It's really just the outfit that gets me. He has a soft plastic hood, which is fine. It looks good. But the bottom half of him is a soft good skirt that's a completely different color. It's supposed to be one continuous robe, but if you take that hood off, he looks like he's wearing a blouse with a different color skirt. And then the black thing over his robe is not only furry, it just looks horrible. But to be honest, I never even noticed it in the movie until this figure came out. It just looks like shadow. Hey Big Sid, anything you want to tell the people over at Hasbro that dressed you like this? No, you will experience the full power of the dark side. Number 10, The Vintage Collection Return of the Jedi Emperor's Royal Guard, VC-105, 75 bucks. First things first, they changed the friggin' image on the card. Yes, the picture on the card is different from the original Kenner figure, which, as a reformed OT traditionalist, really salts my apples. But to be fair, the new picture might even be better. But what the Christ, stop changing stuff. But the figure itself is pretty awesome, or should I say figures. That's right, this is the rare Hasbro 2 for 1, as the figure comes with enough accessories to be able to change into a Crimson Empire comic series royal guard from a return of the jedi royal guard in order to be able to do that he comes with two helmets a beard wearing head sculpt and a removable robe maybe the figure's only flaw is that in order for him to hold the force pike straight up at his side like the guards do in return of the jedi you have to turn and twist his arm in a very unnatural way and i guess collectors must really love that card image because you can buy the tvc version of this figure for about 75 bucks or you can buy the black series 3.75 inch repack with updated robe for about 15 bucks 
You decide. Number nine, the Vintage Collection Expanded Universe Bastilla Sean, VC69, 75 bucks. Knights of the Old Republic figures don't show up too often in the Vintage Collection or in the Black Series, quite frankly, although hopefully we may get more in the future through the GameStop exclusive Gaming Greats line. And this one wouldn't have shown up either if she wasn't the 2009 TVC figure fan vote winner. Hasbro again killed it with the card art, but they went with their own interpretation of what Bastilla Sean looks like instead of her likeness from the game. However, the figure itself resembles her depiction in the video game. Her face looks decent enough, although Hasbro painted her skin color instead of using skin color plastic, and I think she looks kind of awkward looking straight on. But if you turn her head to the side, she looks much better. She comes with an ignited lightsaber and a lightsaber hilt, which you can connect to her belt line. The sculpt is pretty good too, but like Ahsoka, she has swivel jointed hips instead of a ball joint, which limits her articulation, and some collectors complained about having trouble standing her up. Do you think 75 bucks is too much? Not a problem. The figure was repacked in the Black Series, which will only run you about 40. Number 8. The Vintage Collection Attack of the Clones Kit Fisto, VC29, 75 bucks, lasting a total of three and a half seconds, which was surprisingly second best out of four against Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith. He was one of the background Jedi from the prequel trilogy, who then ended up getting more PT in the Clone Wars. This figure is actually excellent, with ball jointed hips, which allow for the Jedi necessary articulation, and you can even stand on one foot. His color and the detail of his tendrils are spot on, making him the best 3.75 Kit Fisto you can find. Even his Tarkin esque soft goods skirt looks good, which looked horrible on that foul smelling grandma from the first list, which accompanies his soft goods robe that although a bit big is still an awesome addition. That's right, this Kit Fisto Attack of the Clones action figure looks exactly how he looked in Revenge of the Sith. Yes, leave it to Hasbro to create an action figure with almost zero complaints, only to F up the card back. This is an excellent likeness of Kit Fisto in Revenge of the Sith, with the eyes bigger, with the dark maroon eyeliner, the oversized robe, and one tendril on either side of his head instead of the two in Attack of the Clones. Other than that mix-up, this is an excellent figure, and maybe something Hasbro should repack soon. Ahem. You know, while the iron's hot with the Black Series Kit Fisto release? Do I gotta think of everything? Number 7. The Vintage Collection Attack of the Clones Django Fett VC 34 75 bucks. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. That's right, here he is, the galaxy's self-described simpleton. And what a strange answer to the question. Your clone armory is impressive. You must be proud. It's unfortunate that this is the same old Jangle figure from the Fett Legacy Evolution set from the 30th anniversary collection. And has Hasbro repacked it before? Once or twice. I would have liked a brand new figure. Hopefully we'll get one in the future, but Hasbro would probably screw that one up though. They'll do their job well. I'll guarantee that. Well, I'll be the judge of that, dude. He doesn't seem to take a hint, this guy. Although it's the same mold, Hasbro updated the figure to make it scene specific to his fight with Obi-Wan Kenobi on Kamino, adding new forearms with the retractable blades he uses to stop from falling into the water, which aren't retractable on this figure, and a poncho. He also has a new paint job that's closer to being screen accurate than the other releases, although they strangely left the joints in the shoulders purple instead of silver. He also has a new head sculpt, which is flesh-colored plastic, which looks amazingly similar to Tamora Morrison, with a removable helmet and the headgear from Piloting Slave 1. He also comes with a rocket firing jetpack with the removable missile. He shoots at Obi-Wan, a jetpack which is destroyed during the fight scene. All jokes aside, this is a great Jango figure, but too bad his head wasn't removable as well. Number 6, The Vintage Collection Revenge of the Sith Shock Trooper, VC-110, 80 bucks. Starting with VC-45, which is the Vintage Collection Phase 1 Clone Trooper, Hasbro developed a new Clone Trooper mold, which should be a good thing, right? Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Although it took clone troopers from swivel hips to ball jointed hips, vastly improving their range of motion, it also gave them these skinny chicken legs and arms, which look so awkward that once you notice them, it's the only thing you can focus on. Although they changed the mold because this new mold is supposed to be much more screen accurate, it makes the clone troopers look anorexic. So wait a minute, you're telling me that the CGI from 18 years ago isn't perfectly anatomically correct? What? How is that possible? Hey Hasbro, so humans have these things, they're called brains, and they allow for critical thinking and rationality. Human brain power should have superseded here and been like, this looks like garbage. Like, look at this guy. There's a person under that suit, right? Now look at this guy. How is he walking on those twigs? And for phase two clone troopers, Hasbro didn't make a new helmet. So like previous phase two releases, the helmet is way too big. But other than the fact it looks like he would topple over if you breathed too hard on him with a helmet that looks like it's hanging on a hook on a coat rack, the figure's not that bad. Oh, and you can pick up the same figure for half the price with the TVC Lost Line release. So yeah. Hey there friend, do you like this video? You like what you see?
well, I have more content just like it. And if you don't like it, I have more content that's not like it. So how about you help both of us out and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button for this video. I got more great content on the way. Right, Frank? There's, there's more coming. Number 5, The Vintage Collection Return of the Jedi Emperor's Wrath Darth Vader, VC-115, 80 bucks. I've never been a fan of the Emperor's Wrath Vaders in any line, including TVC and Black Series, and this one is no different. But my opinion probably could be changed if the figure actually came with an alternate regular Vader head. But first, we need to talk about the card. Leave it a Hasbro to wait until the last friggin' figure in the line, at least at the time, to use an alternate card for the TVC, electing to use the pointing Vader instead of using the usual Vader picture. Collectors like me would have been all over that. Imagine using alternate cards for some of the 37 Boba Fetts that were released in the Vintage Collection. Anyway, this Vader is the TVC VC-08 Empire Strikes Back Vader, which is basically the Legacy Collection Darth Vader, which lacked ball-jointed hips and wrists. However, the paint apps are rather good. They added a translucent blue head with a skull inside, and his right hand is removable to mimic when Luke got even for Vader cutting off his hand in Empire. You know, an eye for an eye or in this case, a hand for a hand. But the removable hand is in a clenched fist for some reason, leaving it completely unusable when the hand is attached. However, the included force lightning, despite looking like a pile of BS, actually works well with the figure. Leaving a lot to be desired, collectors probably would have been better off with a regular Return of the Jedi Vader to close out the line. Number four, the Vintage Collection Return of the Jedi Nine Nun, VC 106, 80 bucks. This dude is not that short. I know he's listed as 1.6 meters on the Star Wars website, but he's not that short. And when I saw him in The Rise of Skywalker as the size of a small child, I nearly spit out the beer I snuck in all over the kids sitting in front of me. I don't know about you, but I remember the original Kenner figure being just slightly shorter than the other figures. What are we doing? Let's just go to the source. Nine Nun, how tall are you? Okay, talk with you. That's what I thought. It's like the people who made you over at Hasbro have never even seen Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Here, look at him in the background. He's the size of a man. This is insane. Anyway, the head sculpt is awesome. It looks just like him, except they neglected to paint the lower set of jowls, I guess, the darker shade that they should be. I'm desperately fighting the temptation to make some jokes about the similarities between his face and a part of the female anatomy. So for the sake of our younger viewers, we're just gonna move on. The sculpt is good too, along with the colors that really pop, but he comes with a blaster rifle, which he can't even hold in any purposeful way. But overall, he's a decent figure, just way too short. Number 3, The Vintage Collection A New Hope Sand Trooper, VC-112, 85 bucks. Although the VC-14 Sand Trooper and the VC-112 look very similar, including their cards, they are very, very different, as Hasbro tried to make up for the mistakes in the first one with his second release. This time, he gets some weathering that looks pretty good, unlike the first attempt, which is the cleanest Sand Trooper in the history of life. That thing's so white, it's hurting my eyes. Hasbro has explained that their thought process at the time was to make him a two-in-one figure, allowing collectors to remove all the sand trooper accessories and have a stormtrooper. A decent thought at the time, but just didn't work in practicality. But as we all know, the traditional sand trooper has an orange pauldron, which is corrected here, and comes with the sand trooper backpack, the traditional weapons, and a flying security droid, which is only in the special editions. My favorite. Hasbro still screwed up some of the paint apps, however, as the pouches on the belt should be black for a sand trooper and are white on a stormtrooper. Not to mention the fact that you can cop the same figure for half the price in the Vintage Collection Lost Line packaging. But overall, a good figure that's worth picking up. Number two, the Vintage Collection Revenge of the Sith General Grievous, VC-17, 85 bucks. Who cares if you can't stand up, right? Is actually the same first sentence that I used for Grievous in the Best Black Series vid, and unfortunately, it applies for this one too. I always wanted this one, and as I mentioned in the first video, back when I was searching eBay for TVC figures that I never picked up around the time of the barges release, when I saw all the Jabba's aliens prices skyrocket, I was eyeing a Grievous, and he was about 30 bucks, and I was like, nah, that's too much. Good work, Matt. Way to think it through. What can I say that's good about this figure? Hmm. He looks great on the card. It's a repack of the Legacy Collection Grievous, which has been repainted, and they added ball-jointed wrists with a fantastic soft goods cape, but he's been cast in the same rubbery plastic, which makes it almost impossible possible to stand him up. But that's no biggie, right? I'll just use a figure stand. Wrong. He has a total of zero peg holes in his feet, so he'll never stand for very long. The arms separate into four, which is a great feature, especially for a 3.75 inch figure. But at that point, it's almost impossible to get him to hold either of the two included lightsabers or the two included lightsaber hilts. And why not give us four ignited lightsabers? Come on. But you know what they should have included? Super glue. So then I could stand him up by gluing him to the ground and get him to hold the lightsabers. 
Great work, Hasbro. Number one. The Vintage Collection Return of the Jedi Boba Fett VC09, 95 bucks. And the Revenge of the Jedi Boba Fett VC09, 135 bucks. So I really didn't want to get into the Revenge of the Jedi variants this early in these lists, but if the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett is going to be on here, then I have to talk about the Revenge cards, right? So Hasbro released Boba Fett eight friggin' times in the Vintage Collection, not including the 2019 re-release of the Vintage Collection Boba Fett, which is also VC09, and the new Return of the Jedi Boba Fett, which is up for pre-order right now. Eight. I'm going to try and name them off the top of my head. Okay. The original VC09, the Empire Strikes Back foil card VC09. We'll get into the foil cards in another video. The repainted Empire Strikes Back VC09. The Return of the Jedi VC09. The Revenge of the Jedi VC09. The Rocket Firing Boba Fett. The Prototype Boba Fett. And the Villain Set 3-pack. So there were four Boba Fett releases that were numbered VC09 in the original Vintage Collection releases from 2010 to 2013. Five including the foil. Again, not including the recent re-releases from Hasbro. The first two were repacks of the Legacy Collection Boba Fett, which was actually a repack of the 30th Anniversary Fett Legacy 3-pack Boba Fett. They had Empire Strikes Back cards with removable helmets, the second one of which had updated paint apps, particularly to the helmet. The last two were repacks of the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection Boba Fett, one on a Return of the Jedi card and the other on a Revenge of the Jedi card, both with updated Return of the Jedi paint apps, and they both did not have removable helmets. You still with me? Damn Hasbro, could you make this any more confusing? Probably could have started with giving them different friggin' numbers. So because of the recent re-release of the TVC Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett, which you can still order online, the original TVC VC09 Empire Strikes Back figure has had its price dropped dramatically. Otherwise, he'd be on this list as well. He's worth a lot to me. I know that, brother. But let's talk about the Return of the Jedi and the Revenge of the Jedi now. 14 figures were released on the Revenge of the Jedi cards as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive in 2011. And the Revenge of the Jedi carded Boba Fett was then a chase variant available at retail. The figure is painted like Boba Fett appears in the Return of the Jedi, and he actually looks great. But I'm curious to see what happens to his price when the new Vintage Collection Return of the Jedi figure drops. Will the original TVC Return of the Jedi figure your drop in price? We'll see. Are they going to release another Revenge of the Jedi card? I don't know. Is anyone still listening? What are some other lists that you guys want to see? I'm always looking for new ideas. What do you think of the list? Did any of the prices surprise you? Do you have any of these figures? Did you know that their prices have gotten so high? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't seen part one, it's linked in the description of this video with all the other lists along with some toy hunt videos and other action figure videos that you should check out if you get a chance. And thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And happy hunting out there.